Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. When you hear the word worship, what comes into your mind? If you're like most people, you think about corporate worship, going to a specific location on a specific day of the week at a certain time, gathering together as it said in the book of Hebrews, do not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. And people assemble together in order to praise God, to give Him thanks, to pray together, to confess sin, to hear words of assurance, also to study His Word and to fellowship and encourage one another. And all of that is well and fine. We ought to be doing that. We ought to gather together on a a frequent basis. But also, worship doesn't have to be in some group setting. In fact, we see examples in the scripture where people worship God by themselves. And this is a very neglected but very important aspect of worship. Now, most people will pray individually or pray also with their spouse or their extended family, their children and such. Also wonderful to do. But worshiping God individually or worshiping God with your spouse or again with your family is a very important part of growing spiritually and being faithful to your Lord and Savior. And I've shared with you many times that the book of Psalms, these Psalms are the prayers of God's people. And when we encounter a Psalm and study it, we can learn so much about how to worship God how to praise him how to give him thanks how to confess our sins how to think in difficult times how to think when things are going well so these psalms are complete that we might have a scripturally correct experience in worshiping god with others and also by ourselves now the psalm that we're going to look at and i would invite you to take out your Bibles and look with me to the book of Psalms and Psalm 93. This is a a special psalm to me because I use it frequently. And this is a psalm that is also one of the Shabbat psalms. On Friday evening, as we gather to worship God on Shabbat, that seventh day, there are a series of psalms that are read and this is one of them and what i like here is that it in a very simple way but a profound way teaches us about god who he is things that he has done things that he will do and why he is worthy of worship not just because of what he has done or will do but because of who he is that he is and we'll see this in a moment that he is the majestic god so we're going to do something we're going to read the psalm and i would encourage you for your own personal worship to read this over and over now not too long ago i received an email and they were warning me that repetition god is against and i wrote back And I thank them for their concern for me spiritually. That means a lot. I value that. That humbles me. But God is not against repetition. The Word of God says He's against vain or empty repetition. But but when we encounter God's Word and we go through it and we go through it and repeat it, 
that doesn't necessarily make it vain and empty in fact it can be growing every time i reread and repeat the text god speaks to me god god reveals things to me i i receive things from him thoughts come into my mind so it's not vain repetition to read scripture over and over and over if we're doing it sincerely and with a desire to hear from god and remember that principle that again i always share don't expect to hear from god unless what god speaks to you you want to obey we need to come before him submissively so look with me as i said to psalm 93. we read and we're going to be looking at this it's a short psalm just five verses and i want to look and pay attention to a greater degree to the the original language it says here hashem malak this word malak in this construction is a verb that speaks about the king ruling it's in the past and therefore we could say the lord has reign and this speaks about something that is consistent that god is completely ruling over this world it speaks of his sovereignty but be careful yes god is sovereign god is omnipotent he is all powerful but god does allow for real decisions to be made and these real decisions can be made against the will of god when someone disobeys god when someone and we could just say it this way sins god is not leading that person in that way god is righteous he is holy he is pure god does not lie and he does not tempt anyone to do evil he simply creates a situation where one is free to choose evil but realize that choice of evil will have most certainty it will have have consequences so we read here look at verse one the lord has ruled and this next word geut geut speaks about majesty but it's also that same word in a different construction speaks about uh, intelligence speaks of one who is wise who is a genius who have has exceedingly great knowledge and in this case we're speaking about god who is omniscient that is he knows all things and he eternally knew all things he knew he knows and nothing is going to to surprise god god doesn't learn anything he knows everything and he's always known everything now this should give us a degree of comfort why well because god knows everything he can act with that perfect knowledge we sometimes speak about the foreknowledge of god it's wonderful god is free to make decisions based upon his foreknowledge now i do not know why that that those who subscribe to reform theology calvinism they tend to lessen the foreknowledge of god i don't know why that is and and god is free to act and move and do things based upon his foreknowledge in fact i'm glad that god has that perfect foreknowledge because that will enable him to act in a way that will bring about and hear this bring about the fulfillment of his will god has many different attributes and god is free to use all of his attributes in order to establish his will so we see here god is sovereign he has reigned and then we're told that he is majestic and god has perfect knowledge see when we look at just the english and we hear the word majestic we may not know that that same word speaks about intelligence he's majestic in his nature but also in his knowledge and then it tells us that in this majesty and this perfect intelligence 
he has clothed himself he is clothed in this majesty and then it tells us the lord has clothed himself and and with with power he has girded himself now someone might say well the term girded is in the hit palel which is in the reflexive he has girded himself but when we look at the term for god to clothe himself it doesn't say himself just says he's clothed but how did he become clothed everything that's happened in regard to god is a outcome of he himself doing it there is no other source that that brought god into being everything that that god does he does and therefore if he is majestic and he is if he is all knowing and he is all powerful and he is it is because of he himself that he is this way because everything is an outcome that which is good and right everything that is good and right and proper is the outcome of god but those things that are not good those things that are not proper those things that are not holy these are the outcome of man who has chosen unwisely chosen in defiance of the revelation of god keep reading not only has god girded himself with power but notice it says surely or indeed that's the hebrew word af and in this construction it speaks about that which is is indeed a reality it's an affirmation and an emphasis so so surely and then we have the verb which means that he has has established now what's important is that it's in the future we could call that the hebrew imperfect but it simply is the imperfect which means this that what god has established it is going to be different in the future how well god we can say and let's just speak about the kingdom in one sense the kingdom exists but god has not brought that kingdom into the fullness so god is establishing and he will establish and then we have the word tevil which is world meaning this god is going to bring ultimately this world into being how he wants it to be you say well why isn't it that way now sin sin is in the world it's been dealt with sufficiently and perfectly by the cross but there is still the effects of sin but god will establish this world and the implication is this majestic god who has power so god knows all things and he's also has the power to bring about his will based upon his omniscience that he knows everything based upon his omnipotence that he's all powerful the will of god ultimately ultimately is going to be established and that should bring us comfort because god's will is good so we when we encounter this psalm we find instructions here that tell us that the will of god and the reason based upon it his will is going to be brought about and his will is perfect then it says look at the end of the verse bow timot which means it will not be made to collapse again it's a term of assurance god is going to bring this world in the future he is going to bring it into the condition that he wants it to be and that will not change it will not collapse there will be nothing that will be able to bring about a change to his kingdom once it's established in the fullness there's going to be no change to it look if you would to verse 2. it begins by speaking about once more establishment and here it says his throne literally your throne it makes it personal so your throne has been established may us from and we could say here since and it's speaking about a long time 
we can say eternity but here it's simply saying your throne has been established since and it's open-ended meaning going back far 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 god's rule now it's a word for throne which speaks about the place of judgment so god's judgment it may not be manifested in its fullness but that judgment has already gone forth in the sense god has already determined how he's going to judge with what is he's going to judge nothing is surprising him so we read here has been established your throne from from since going all the way back forever it's a different term forever are you so again speaking about and emphasizing this eternal aspect of god god doesn't wear out he doesn't grow old god does not change and therefore because he is able to sustain himself perfectly no uh, decay no mortality but uh, incorruptible and eternal because of that we can have assurance that that god's created purpose and his will is going to be established and that is a great reason why we ought to worship him look at the next verse verse three now a word is going to be repeated several times here it is the word naharot which speaks simply of rivers or streams and the idea here is the flowing of water and when water floods when it streams down when it moves water is extremely powerful and when water moves it makes great noise now i happen to live very close to the mediterranean probably about our our building is about a kilometer from the shore but but uh on a a nice evening we'll sleep with our windows uh open and we'll hear the roaring of the sea and it's amazing sometimes how clear you can hear it even though we're a kilometer almost uh, uh, a mile away from the shore but you hear it and when i hear that that roaring of the sea i think about the the power of god why well look at this verse verse three the rivers or the streams and this may be be speaking about the waves of 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 the sea lifted up so the waves they are lifted up O lord and then he says again the the streams they be lifted up and then it says their voice so the sound of the the streams are lifted up and all of this is being lifted up as a way of presenting they are presented to us this this power and who's the source of this power god is he created the heavens and the earth and also the seas and all which is in them so again speaking about god who is powerful now understand what he's doing here god is king god is majestic god is all knowing god is all powerful god has a kingdom why he has a throne this throne has been established from eternity past it is not lessened it is not uh, in any way uh, decaying or wearing out but it endures and it will not collapse and now what we see in verse 3 is simply an expression the sounding of the power of god and then it says look at the end of verse 3 the streams they 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 will lift up their waves and here again it uses a a unique word for wave and this word speaks about the the power of the waves of water that they come in and we know they can cut into Iraq I live in the southern part of Israel but if you go to the northern tip right on the Lebanese border 
you can see how the waves and there's some beautiful grottos that you can go in to see how the waves of water have cut into a mountain and have made streams and passages way through stone and this just speaks about this consistency of the power moving and bringing about change and this is what god is saying god's power is going to bring about change and that change is going to be in accordance with his rule and the evidence is this is this throne that has been established and will bring about ultimately the future that god has has called this world to become the only question is see it's not a question is is this kingdom going to be established it already has it's just a matter of it coming and being brought into its its eternal reality with us it's eternal but it's eternal reality and here's the key with us we need to get into the kingdom and what the scripture is saying here is that we should see the power of god that brings about change and realize a change is coming what type of change a kingdom change move on to verse 4 where it says then the voices and this is sounds so the word voice coal or coal can mean sound so then the sounds of many waters and the and it uses word a deer it's in the plural a deer means as well something that is splendor glorious or something that is very mighty so it has a a beautiful aspect to it something that is fitting for a situation but also something that's mighty it's unique so what he's saying here look at verse 4 many waters but the sounds of many waters but we have something that is more than that and it's also more majestic more glorious mightier than the the breakers and this is another word for waves the breakers of the sea and then it speaks about how all of this is is wonderful mighty powerful glorious and then it takes our attention look at what it says at the end of, of verse 4 a deer ba marom hashem which means this glory this splendor this might is where on high it is exalted and this is where the lord is now i have shared in a different study about the difference between when the bible speaks of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of god when it speaks about the kingdom of god there's a a present uh, effect or a benefit something that you can experience now when it speaks about the kingdom of heaven it speaks about that same kingdom but it does so in a more remote way in a distant way meaning we need to repent because of the kingdom of heaven it's distance it's coming it's going to be established and we need to get ourselves ready for it of course through messiah's gospel and through being participants in the kingdom work but but the kingdom of heaven has that same kingdom but is referencing it as a distant as a future reality but not now the kingdom of god when when that term is used there are present day benefits there's present day reality to that kingdom so he says here how majestic glorious splendor mightiness is god who is on high and then now let's conclude with our last verse look at verse verse 5 your testimonies now it speaks about god testifying and most of the rabbinical scholars see that god testifies to us through his commandments god speaks and so frequently when god speaks he does so through commandments so your testimony or your commandments or the testimony of your torah that's the implication according to most of the scholars they are are faithful and not just faithful 
but are very faithful or exceedingly faithful so what god says it is true we can believe it and it is exceedingly this word exceedingly or very it's the hebrew word meod many speak of it as a a kingdom word it's something that beyond the natural so your testimonies they are faithful exceedingly and then he says to your house and this is probably referring to to god's temple and in one sense his temple also relates to his his dwelling presence which is a kingdom aspect so your house and then it has a word for for fitting and appropriate and proper and it relates to what he says next this final word in this phrase kodesh which is holy so your house it's it's fitting appropriate for holiness now why is that important because holiness relates to the purposes of god and what he's saying is this i am creating a kingdom that is fitting appropriate proper it manifests majesty and splendor but it all is connected to what the will of god it's all right for god's will to be manifested and what the psalmist is telling us is that it's the will of god that that we want to connect with that is how we have a kingdom experience that's how we experience this this god who is exalted on high i'm not on high i'm here but i want to experience this this exaltation this god who is splendor this god who is majestic this god who is seated on most high i want to experience that presence with him and how do i do that well through his testimonies they're faithful when we put into action his word his commandments it brings us into having an experience with the god who is seated on most high and then he says last three words hashem leorech yamim which means the lord for an extension of days literally a lengthening of days why is that important well this lengthening of days represents the eternal kingdom the kingdom is established and is just going to continue to go on and on and on how is it going to go on through his power through his foreknowledge through his might through his majesty through his splendor all of this is what the psalmist is revealing us about god who has a kingdom purpose and if we're wise what we're going to desire more than anything else is to be in that kingdom but what does paul tell us he tells us that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god because of that because of that we want to be free from this body and there's two ways that we're going to be free from this body of corruption of decay of mortality and such we are going to be set free of this when the rapture happens that's why it's called our blessed hope in in titus uh, chapter uh, 2 and verse 13 and that's also uh, an experience we can have this separation through death and that's why in the same way that we want messiah now we're ready we ought to be ready for that rapture experience we want that it'll come on god's timing but if if we should die before that how wonderful don't fear death don't grieve the death of someone who's a believer that god has taken now it's hard for those who are left behind behind we grieve that we miss them we can be lonely i get that but understand they're in the presence they're not sleeping 
they are in the presence they have consciousness full consciousness with the lord that comforts me and from their perspective we're only going to be separated for what will seem to them as almost no time why well we've all heard the expression you know time flies when having fun when we are in the presence of god time is going to seem as no more so you may be left here separated from the one that you love for 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years but for them it's only going to seem like that until you're reunited yes in the kingdom of god there is going to be a reuniting of all believers we're going to recognize one another and all of this i'm sharing it why because this is a reason for worshiping god praising god yes for who he is but also for his wonderful promises so my hope is this that you will join me in using this 93rd psalm saying it repeating it over and over in a meaningful way experiencing god learning from god worshiping god and having a growing understanding of why he is so worthy of worship psalm 93 a wonderful instrument for worshiping the lord of lords and the king of kings i'll close with that until next week shalom from israel well we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org again to find out more about us please visit our website loveisrael.org there you will find articles and numerous other lectures by baruch these teachings are in video form may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.